And Chinese debt is a huge issue in Africa. First look at the magnitude of the problem. Africa owes over $700 billion to external lenders. Countries are defaulting on their debt. The stability of the continent is at risk. Efforts are underway to avoid large-scale defaults. But geopolitics is coming in the way. Africa has become a battleground for a great power contest yet again. A contest between the U.S. and China this time. Let's tell you how this is playing out. In 2020, Zambia was among the first to default. How much do they owe? Around $17 billion. That's according to one estimate, $17 billion. China is Zambia's single biggest creditor. Around $6 billion is owed to Chinese finances. In January, U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen visited the country. What for? To help Zambia recover by restructuring its debt. Yellen said that China is a stumbling block in the process. I am encouraged that progress may become possible shortly. Let me say I know that the Chinese have been um, a barrier to concluding the negotiations. I recently met with my Chinese counterpart uh, just a few days ago in Zurich, and I specifically raised the issue of Zambia and asked for their cooperation in trying to reach a speedy resolution. China has been a barrier, she said. The numbers speak for themselves, but China saw this statement as an insult and it decided to hit back. The Chinese embassy in Zambia issued a rebuttal. Listen to what they said. The best prospect of the debt issues outside the U.S. would be the U.S. Treasury Department solving the U.S.'s own domestic debt problem. The statement mentions America's growing national debt. The U.S. Treasury has begun taking quote-unquote extraordinary measures to meet its obligations after the U.S. government hit its $31.4 trillion borrowing limit. Cope with your own debt. That's the message from China to the U.S. And this is what you call a below-the-belt attack, but it doesn't solve the problem at hand. Who will rescue Africa from this debt crisis? I have some more data, and this is from the United Nations. 54 lower-income countries across the world face a high risk of debt distress. 54, and out of these, 24 countries are from Africa. This includes Nigeria and Egypt, two of the biggest economies in the African continent. Why are African nations struggling with their finances? Broadly, they face two problems. Number one, low tax revenues. And number two, high interest rates on loans. The rates are quite high. Even the United Nations Secretary General cannot ignore this problem anymore. Antonio Guterres says African nations are facing extortion. Investing in Africa pathways to prosperity requires finance. And developing countries are repeatedly left in the lurch. The global financial system routinely denies them debt relief and concessional financing while charging extortionate interest rates. As a result, vital systems are starved of investment from health and education to green technology, social protection, and the creation of new sustainable jobs. The United Nations has extended crisis funding to Africa. But what about China? What is Beijing doing beyond attacking the West? It is very much a part of this problem. China accounts for at least 12% of Africa's debt. This is both private and public debt. And how much money is 12%? More than $150 billion, according to one estimate. In August last year, China cancelled 23 loans. And these were given to 17 countries. Beijing did not reveal the amount. How big were these loans? And it has been doing this since the year 2000. It forgives some loans... And this move generates headlines. China gets good PR out of it. But in reality, this debt relief is meaningless. Because these loans are anyway nearing their end. And this is the truth of China's development loans. They are essentially debt traps. And China's debt relief is the height of hypocrisy, we say.